As soon as the veteran Marlon Starling won a championship, he immediately sought out an almost scholarly great-grandfather to be at his side. Trainer Eddie Futch, a man rare in this primitive game, who flees to the serenity of a national park to relax and think. These quiet, solid qualities were evident in him growing up in Detroit. He was good enough in basketball, his first love, to play semi-professionally. He got married, went to work, and boxing became his next and future love. He trained in a gym with Joe Lewis, occasionally sparring with the budding legend, and like Lewis, he won a Golden Gloves title, but he didn't turn pro. Those were the depression years, and everybody that had a job was lucky. So I had this job, and I was working hard. And sometimes I worked 17 hours a day in order to take care of my growing young family. Um, in the afternoon, I had a split shift job. I would go in the morning, get up, be off in the afternoon, and then go back and work in the night. And uh, I was training hard, working hard, and fighting on my day off. And uh, I did this for, for about three years, almost four years before it finally started to, to tell on me physically. Whatever chance Futch had to make a living as a fighter ended with the discovery that he had a heart murmur. But his analytic approach to this rough, mean sport led to a very good living and championship stature as a trainer. In 1958, he had his first champion, the welterweight Don Jordan. In the next three decades, he was associated with some of the best prize fighters of our time, Bob Foster, Joe Fraser, Ken Norton, Alexis Arguello, Larry Holmes, Michael Spinks, to name just a few. Marlon Starling wanted him for the same reason others have, his confidence-giving ability to pinpoint a problem and its solution and to communicate it simply. His fighters don't need a jockey with a busy whip. We only got three minutes! Yeah! Come on, baby! We got to rough you around. You got your hooks, your double and triple hooks on the inside. Kind of strong inside. Right. I know he's strong inside. Oh, don't lay inside doing nothing, though. You're out of there. Then you get inside, work with both hands to the body, and then shift to the head, okay? I have okay. never been a driver. Okay. I've always tried to be a leader. And uh, I've been able to achieve a, a great deal of my results uh, working that way. And um, I've always found that um, you can't tell a fighter too many things in a corner. He won't remember them. You tell him the things that are most important. And so that doesn't take much time. Having graced boxing for most of his 77 years, Futch is a treasured resource to gym rats and champions alike. A word here, a touch there, can give clear meaning to the hard truths of a hard road. The self-taught starling has been up and down that road. Truth is, it's too hard to travel alone. You know, I finally found someone that knows more than I do about the game. You know, I think Eddie is like, you know, an encyclopedia at the boxing. I think he's a, a good person to listen to. It's a good watchful eye over you, trying to, for you to try to prepare yourself to... It brings out the best in you. He, he knows boxing. Eddie Futch's well-traveled road is fenced with the jewels of achievement, paved with the satisfactions of teaching, competing, winning, and more. People have asked me, what do you consider your major achievement? And I know that they're expecting me to say, Frazier Ali in the thriller in Manila, or Frazier Ali fight number one, or some other great fight that I have been involved in. But you know what my answer is? I raised a great family. I think that's the, the greatest thing that anybody can do on this earth. There is Marlon Starling as he enters the ring, and it's a mark of two of the many sides of his character, proud arrogance and willing curiosity, that he says of Eddie Futch, I finally found a man who knows more about boxing than I do. Mar